What is Jenkins? Jenkins is an open source automation tool that happens to be developed in Java. But how is it used and what sort of things can it automate, you may wonder. Simply put, it can basically automate anything that you instruct Jenkins to do. But its main use is for automating tasks in the software development cycle from code testing at specific times to move entire projects to production or staging environments. It is very similar to cron but with a whole lot more features and accessibility for its users. I will go more into detail about everything it can do as we progress through the course. Now let's go into the history lesson. Jenkins originally started as the Hudson project developed by a company called Sun Microsystems. The Hudson project's success was recognized during the Java 1 convention and it was awarded the Software Dukes Award in the Developer Solution category. For those of you who are not familiar with Java 1, Java 1 is an annual conference organized by Oracle Corporation to discuss Java technologies. Intrigued by its success, Oracle then later acquired the Hudson's project from Sun Microsystems. After politics disputes over project ownership, it was then decided to change the Hudson project name to Jenkins. The dispute between Sun Microsystems and Oracle caused a split between developers as well. The Hudson's project supporters even started referring to Jenkins as the fork project of Hudson. The rivalry continues on today between Hudson and Jenkins developers, but Jenkins surprises Hudson's developers by a long shot as their numbers continue to rise. Jenkins is rapidly becoming a favorite amongst the modern developer community. There has been a great increase of the user base and enterprises who are adopting Jenkins in a continuous integration environment. This increase has caused a big infusion of plugin developers who work tirelessly to continue to make improvements. Now it's time to learn some important terminology and concepts. First, we're going to analyze what continuous integration is. But to help us fully grasp the concept, let's look at our typical software development cycle. The five stages of the software development cycle are the following. First phase is the planning phase. This is where most requirements are gathered. Next is the design phase. This is where the technical requirements are aligned with the specifications gathered during the planning phase. Next comes the coding and implementation phase. This is when the project's handed off to the developers to start working their magic and make the project happen. After completion of the coding phase, then comes the testing phase. This is where the primary goal is to find bugs and correct them before the software is released. Finally, comes the maintenance phase. During this phase, the software is released to its users. This is where a lot of the bugs that manage to squeeze through the cracks of the testing phase start to appear and are corrected with updates and patches. Some of the problems with the standard development cycle is that it is very human error prone. For example, if a developer forgets to commit the latest version of the code to the repository, then the rest of the developers that are working on the same project will be affected, causing all kinds of confusion and delays. If no bugs are caught, then buggy software is released to the consumer. Once the bugs are finally identified, then it's that much more difficult to fix X number of bugs that could have been caught early in the development cycle. We do not want a reactive approach. We want a proactive approach. We want the continuous integration approach. Another problem is that it is up to the developer to catch bugs early in the process. If a developer happens to be having a bad day, then bugs can be introduced into the project without anyone to catch it. The goal of continuous integration is to automate every step of the software development cycle. This allows to be able to deliver faster, more frequently, and much better quality software. In other words, CI by nature allows developers to focus on the project by letting automation take care of the phases of the software development cycle, which means less distractions equals better results and happier developers.
How do we get started with CI? Let's analyze first some of CI's course principles to help us implement continuous integration. Our first principle is the maintenance of a central repository. This means that every developer commits to a central repository frequently and regularly. This way, every team member has access to the latest version to the project at all times. Notice that I didn't specify how many times or when commits should occur. That is because there really isn't a determined number that should be followed. Every organization would be different in terms of deadlines and rules by which new code can be introduced into the central repository. The main takeaway of maintaining a central repository is to commit frequently and regularly. The next principle is automate builds. This principle means that a single command should have the power of building an entire infrastructure. In this example, an entire section of a website can be rebuilt by running a single command such as make space rebuild pages. Make the command with the rebuild pages argument. The key takeaway of automate builds is that a single command should have the power to build an entire infrastructure. Next up is automate testing. The idea behind automated testing is that when a new commit is performed, a test code script gets triggered and checks the code for bugs. This allows for any bug to get caught early in the development cycle. And finally, our last principle of CI is automate delivery. This concept means that after the project has successfully passed the code test during the testing phase, then the project through automation gets moved to staging or a production server. So far we have learned about continuous integration and other concepts as well as how to make decisions and how Jenkins will suit your organization. Now let us do something a little more fun and learn how to install Jenkins. So first thing we're going to do is connect to our server. And there are two commands that are really long but let's just go over them real quick. All right, so the first one here is uh, basically downloads a key that we then on the following command add it to this Jenkins.list file. So we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste those commands into our shell. Once you copy and paste this, it should return and say that it went okay so I got the okay here so that means everything went well so now the second command gonna copy and paste I have too much space oh, you gotta give it a sudo because this is this is you know you have to have administrative rights to do so. So there we go. The next thing is very important. Always run a app get, I mean sudo app get update. This will verify that everything is current in terms of Jenkins and all the packages. Let me go ahead and close this other screen that we don't need anymore. So everything seemed to go well. So we can go ahead and install Jenkins. So same thing as you install any other package. sudo apt get install Jenkins. I think it was with lowercase j. It's going to take a few seconds. Uh, 
and it is completed. So now you can verify that Jenkins is installed by going to etc init.d Jenkins status. And same thing as the web server Apache, it'll say that it's active. Or dead, depending if it's off. So now that we have finished the installation on Jenkins, we can go ahead and check out our new shiny web interface. So let's open up the browser and go to your IP address of your server. The listener is set to port 8080 for Jenkins. So this is the first screen uh, that you will get. It will tell you that there's a password located in this file and then we need to paste it here. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this we're gonna ha need this is uh, that directory is owned by root so you will need to give it a sudo command to have access and then cat var lib Jenkins secrets initial and this is the password that they're talking about so we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste on our web interface and we can hit continue ah, we don't want to save that we can change it anyway. So here you're going to get two options. Install suggested plugins and select plugins to install. I would do the first option. And here's a list of everything that it will be installed. All right, so we can create our first account, admin. Alright, so we can either save and finish or we can continue as admin. Let's go ahead and do click save and finish. So we don't have to put that long password again. Now we can go start using Jenkins and here we are. We are now in our new web interface Jenkins. So this tells us our installation was successful. Here are the commands and resources that I wanted to share with you. The first one is the documentation for Jenkins and then all the commands that I use throughout the installation process. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.